Okay, so I've implemented some 3D collision handling now. Let's see, we got this, this controller to move the ball around and it's colliding with the different faces of this 3D model and it moves um, accordingly. So let's talk about that. So there's, um, there's actually a small sphere at the bottom of this sphere that I'm using as the collision detector. So here's just, just drawing the sphere that's actually doing the collision detection. And the reason for that is if the collision detection sphere is too big, then it can collide with multiple phases at once. And as you can see, the way that I have it going right now, it can only, it's only, it loops through all the faces and checks for collision. And uh, it will return the index of the last one that it recognized. So if you're colliding with these two right now, that means that this one is later in the for loop for the collision check than this one. So it's only recognizing the collision with this face and not this one until the collision with this face stops, right? And then it sees that one. So for a large sphere like this, it kind of has some weird side effects when you're doing that. So if you use a really small sphere, then it's better for um, not colliding with multiple phases at once. It just, it just handles it better. And then so what happens is when it's on a, a face like this, um, right now the, so the black vector, the black vector is the input vector and the yellow vector is the actual motion vector. It's the vector that's going to be applied to update the next position of the ball. So when you're on this, this face here, you can see our, our normal vector in blue here is pointing out. So it takes into consideration your input vector and then it projects it to the plane defined by this normal. So, see that in action. And then the yellow vector is the resultant uh, projected vector. Oh. Let's see if I can give you that. Yeah, okay. So, like on this one, here's our normal vector. Here's in black is our input vector. So that's where the ball like wants to go based on the input, but then we're looking, we're projecting that to this face and saying, just travel along this vector instead so that you will not go through the plane. And that is basically it. I've also thrown in some controller support for this. I'm using my N64 controller. And, uh, Yeah, what else did I want to talk about? Those are the main points. That's basically the gist of it. Um, code will be in the description. Oh, and then I also have it so that um, you will, you'll fall. And that's important because if I don't have that, then when you go backwards off of this sloped face, you can sort of move straight through the air because it's no longer detecting collision. Because how this works is it says, if you're detecting a collision, then it will move you along the normal. So it finds the heading vector, finds the normal vector, projects the heading vector onto the normal to get that projected, the heading vector being that black input vector, projecting that to the plane, to get this yellow vector that you're seeing. And then here, I check the distance and I'm moving it by the radius plus 0 0.1. And that was before I had gravity. And the reason for that little addition is, okay, you're seeing some blinking. 
Yeah, that's the other reason. I kind of want to keep it colliding. Because if it's not, if I move it all the way away from the collision plane every time, then it's just going to be moved away and then it's going to fall back down. So I just want like a small little threshold just to keep it colliding once it's colliding. Now, if I didn't have gravity, if I didn't have any gravity, then Once I'm on a plane, see, I can just go right off of it. Now I'm still moving. Oh, I thought I was still moving with that plane. No. So yeah, anyway, turn gravity on, and then it'll always fall back down. And then I add it also, if you go off the map too far, it just resets your position to the center. And that's pretty much it. There's some debug stuff here for pausing to look at it. Um, I didn't implement a DAT GUI for this. It's just if you press the spacebar to to like freeze the scene, and then you can press the P key to play. This locks motion of the player. All right. Thanks for watching.